Hey everyone, Travis here towards the end of day one of the, uh, well, the expansion tournament for LCS. I'm joined by Liquid of Curse, fresh off of Curse Academy's victory yes. going into morale. You guys, you are, you are one match away from being able to sell this team and just be done with them forever. Uh, is that how you're looking at it right now, just the dollar signs whenever that victory sign comes up? No, no absolutely not. I mean, um... Curse Academy. I have uh, I've played with some of those players for the last like like four years ago. You know, I know Cop from when I had to. He actually I had to support him at one point in season one. So uh, there's just a lot of relationships there. I'm really good friends with Saint. I um, was one of the only people that actually believed in Keen. You know, he was kind of a, a top player in Oceania and everybody said oh well Oceania is not North America it's not Korea you know it's not China it's not EU like even if you're number one on the ladder it doesn't mean much and I was like you know what I've seen this kid play like I'm gonna I'm gonna go all in I'm gonna bring him here I'm gonna put him on a visa I'm gonna bring him into the house and everybody's like what, what the fuck are you doing you know and so uh it it worked out you know Keen's a monster um and Bunny Bunny is like the most passionate energetic kid you'll ever meet he's just um, he's got really supportive parents. He he's amazing at the game. Uh, I'm sure you saw the prediction uh, flash and hook with uh, the CLG game on double lift. So you know the, the kid's got a lot of talent. And Hansers is just like you know head down work ethic. So it's just a good group of guys deserve to be in LCS. And I want to see them make it there. You know when I started the team, I actually. Uh, the riot ruling about having two teams in LCS did not exist. So I was just starting a team. I wanted to have a, 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 a team and a B team and a sister team to practice against. And I could move people back and forth based on like, hey, if you're not working hard, somebody else will take your spot. Um, and then when that new ruling came out, it was like, okay, uh, I might actually have to sell this team. So a team has never been sold in LCS. And it's actually not just the team. It's, it's the team it's the lcs spot like when you think about it how hard is it to get an lcs spot yeah. i mean it's are you, are you turning this into a sales pitch now <laughs> you're like there's so much value here for anyone watching this video but no i see i see what you i see what you mean like yeah there's a, a lot I'm, I'm sure for you there's a lot of emotion here because from a business side like you really want this to happen from a personal side you like all these guys but then there's also the fact that like you, they'd be moving out and you'd be saying goodbye to them or whatever. When you're looking at offers and owners, like how is it just a matter of like the highest bidder wins or what do you look at in terms of considering like the future for these guys? So I wanted to create kind of an equal playing field and I thought the best way to do that was to just put out announcements saying I'm looking for someone to purchase a team should they qualify and if you're interested you just email me i'll talk to you i'll make sure you're a qualified buyer and then you can submit an offer and um i want to find out who you are you know and there, i really don't have too many qualifications i don't want to start getting really opinionated about who i feel is going to be a better owner because of their methodologies on on managing the team it's more of do you have the resources to pay these guys do you have the resources to put them in a house and give them everything they need to be successful and um, do you like the game? Are you in esports? Are you passionate about it? And as long as you have those two things, then that's qualifying for me. And then, and then it just comes down to what is the real market value for the, for the team in the spot? Like, if it's never been done before, then how much do we know it's worth? So I don't want to, like, put numbers out there when I don't even know uh, what it could go, to, go for. There were a lot of rumors going into this day where it seemed as though pe people I was hearing at least a lot of people saying that coast was looking really good curse Academy had been struggling for a little bit how much of those rumors were true and and were you nervous at all going into today I was actually uh, pretty nervous to be honest um, you know we've we the team hasn't just been dominating scrims the two weeks ago we had the team play Alliance TSM and the main team and that was their scrim set for the week and they just got like it, there was it was pretty one-sided in those scrims and um and so i thought you know i thought oh well we'll just put them against the hardest teams and they'll they'll pick it up but i think it was also demotivating you know and uh so that created some conflict and there was a lot of you know kind of back and forth and how are we going to play this and um so it wasn't it wasn't like oh we're winning all of our scrims we're going to go in here we're just going to smash everybody there was a little bit of 
hey, we might actually lose this. And I think that nerve, like the, the nervousness and the, and the, you know, maybe 70% confidence instead of 100% confidence kind of pushed them in the last week to be like, okay, let's, let's fucking buckle down and let's like win this thing. So it came at a good time. And this week of screams went really well. So tomorrow they play against fusion. I don't know. Now it's kind of hard after today to decide who's like strong and who isn't and all that kind of thing. But uh, do you, do you expect them to beat fusion tomorrow? I think they're a better team than fusion. Absolutely. Um, I actually think they're better than most teams in the LCS. Um, the shot callings there, the knowledge is there, the mechanics are there. Um, it, they are, they're great. You know, it's just, do they show up? You know, like when you watch that first game, like Saint got his red stolen, <laughs> like he missed the smite at Baron. Like there was just a lot of nerves. You could just, you could feel it. Right. And so, um, if they don't show up, they're not going to win. And, uh, when they do show up, they're a really damn good team. So yeah, I, I think they'll, I think they'll win. Absolutely. I know the games are over, and so you guys are all getting ready to go back, and I want to grab an interview with Smite Fish just to talk to him about that. Baron, uh, but the, the last question I did have for you, uh, I think a lot of the community hasn't realized yet how big of a deal this a good game Twitch acquisition uh, is. Uh, and I, as somebody who, you know, you have a deal with Twitch and you're a competitor to a lot of the GG uh, stuff, what was your take on that announcement? You know, I think it is a pretty big announcement. You know, I think esports is kind of at this point where non endemics are starting to take notice of everything that we have going on here and they're finding value in doing digital endorsements and 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 sponsorships with players and talent. And that opens the floodgates to kind of big money getting involved. And um it's really about how do we structure things right now? You know, uh, different sports leagues are structured in different ways. You know, the, the, the bowling to tennis to football to baseball, there's not actually just this prescription that just says, oh, this is how it's going to be done. Like owners and developers or players like and agents, like how does it all fit together? And so right now, because it's a new industry, everyone's kind of like, kind of fighting for position in a way. And so I think this is the first of many big changes and big movements in the industry. I think um, uh, there's gonna be a lot of positioning. I think it's gonna be kind of this, uh, this, this business uh, strategic ch chess match in a lot of ways. And um, it's gonna be interesting to see how things shake out. You know, I, uh, I hope that um, those that are, uh, really good esports owners, players, whomever you are, uh, that have put so much into this industry. I just hope that those people, um, you know, are able to, to kind of dictate the future of it and be part of it. Well, I know it's kind of an awkward situation because you're, you're partnered with Twitch. So I want to ask you, I won't ask you, is this like a good thing or a bad thing or anything like that? But I, I will ask you, uh, just maybe the final, final question here is when you see something like this, do you, do you think that this is something you will need to react to? And that could be either in a good way or a bad way. It doesn't matter. But do you think that this is like something where you're like, okay, this will definitely change the way I approach next year? Um, I mean, I'm always thinking about stuff, right? You know, so whether there's something with, with Twitch and good game or, you know, other developers or games coming up and, you know, Blizzard's coming out with their new Overwatch game, like there's new esports, there's, there's, it, there's always something going on. You know, if, if I wasn't thinking about, it, I wouldn't be a good businessman. So, uh, you know, absolutely I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about that with a bunch of other things too. So, Thank you so much for the interview. Congratulations on the win today. We'll see how you guys do tomorrow. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports at ongamers.com.